रेकॉर्डिंग ऑन अच्छे So let us put in. So today is the first class, or maybe I've shown you a, a interacting theory earlier when I discussed the complex scalar theory and I discussed the principle of gauge invariance. There I discussed how interactions can come into the theory because if you total gauge invariance, then it automatically brings in an electromagnetic field. Uh, <clears throat> so yes, it is not that you have not seen interactions, but today we are we shall take up another theory. And look at interact interacting theories. So here, first of all, I would like to tell you that I would instead of phi's, I would just write this as phi naughts. Just remind you that these are fields in the interaction picture. So they evolve via the free part of the Hamiltonian. So the, they are basically free fields. And so when you write down your Lagrangian or your Hamiltonian density, if you write down your Hamiltonian density. We will get a free part plus we will get a potential part which is d, and this d will be basically lambda by four factorial phi naught to the power of four. This lambda is a coupling constant. <coughs> this is a self interaction that we put in in the in the free theory. So this full theory is a is an interacting theory. It's a self interaction. It is of the form phi naught to the power of four. So this is called lambda phi fourth theory. And this four factorial is there for for purposes which this is actually you can put a factor of four also, but four factorial that means factor of twenty four is is put for convenience for calculational convenience. So what happens is that there are factors which get cancelled out due to this this combinatorial uh, combinatorial factor of four factorial. So it is because of combinatorics that you put this factor four factorial. And then your Hamiltonian density becomes a free part h naught, which is nothing but this thing. Uh, basically, you know what it is. What it is it is half of pi square plus grad phi square. You get it by making a Legendre transform. And the d part, which is the interaction part, is basically lambda by four factorial phi naught to the power of four. And once again, what we need to calculate, what we aim in calculating, is the following: we want to calculate phi of x. <coughs> Phi of y, or you can write it down as we can use. We shall use a different notation. Phi of x1, phi of x2, omega. So this is the quantity that we want to calculate. And we 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 have a formula. We have derived a formula for this. And ultimately, what we shall do is we shall divide this by omega. And so this division. Of this quantity by this factor is is once again for for cancelling out the for, uh, the extra factors that we discussed earlier. So it will basically ca cancel out the unwanted factors. And you will see this factor is actually essential. We will see in a moment once we do the calculation for this theory. We will see what happens. And we know that the formula we have derived the formula for this. The formula for this is nothing but the sine order product of Phi zero x one phi naught x two into e to the power of minus i by h bar integral. <coughs> so I can just put infinity to minus infinity to plus infinity, and then it will be vi. So so this is in the full. This full thing is in the interaction picture. <coughs> so, uh, just just one just a second. 
Okay, you should just remember that this is in the interaction picture. So this this part would actually mean you have this Hamiltonian density, and here you have h naught plus b. But this is the Hamiltonian density at at time t is equal to zero. Just remember that this is at time t is equal to zero. But since we are in the interaction picture, so whatever we write here, this is this is the full thing in the interaction picture. So these phi naughts are basically functions of x and time t. This is not a this is not independent of time. This is a function of time, and therefore it is this this quantity is basically v i of t. Okay. This is v i of t. This is important. You should be careful about this point. <coughs> so when you write h as h not plus v, all these things are basically this is basically of whatever you have written, but at time t is equal to zero. So this Hamiltonian density is basically this term plus this term, but all this thing is at time t is equal to zero. So you just put t is equal to zero here. So in this the the h not term will be half del mu phi not zero x vector del mu phi zero zero x vector and so on. So this is defined at time t is equal to zero. But when you write this, this is in the interaction picture. So this evolves by the by the full part of the free part of the Hamiltonian, and therefore this this lambda four factorial phi not Four, I I just write x vector comma t, or you can write it as phi not x also four four vector. So this is basically the idea. Is this point clear? Yes, sir. So if this is the idea of t, <coughs> so. So the idea of t is just this positive part without the minus sign because. Yeah, in the Hamiltonian density, it appears with the plus sign. So what we shall have is lambda by four factor here, phi naught x to the power of four, <coughs> and then you will have unity. Ah, uh, this is dt. But this is the Hamiltonian density. Therefore, you will have another integral, and you can combine it and write it as d4x, because it is h times dt. H is basically integral of this d cubed x, so you will have a d cubed x times dt, so that gives you d4x. So this is this thing, and then you have this. So this is the top part, the numerator, and the denominator is this. So V I T, you should also remember that V I T is basically defined as D Q X of lambda by four factorial phi naught x. This is what V I T is. So now you will have this will be lambda by four factorial So this is this is the thing that we have. And we need to calculate the numerator and denominator, which we shall do now. <coughs> so let us take the take this this thing. And what we shall do is assume that this coupling constant is is is, a, is, is less than one. And therefore, you can do perturbation theory, and hence we shall expand expand this thing in a in a series. We have phi naught x one phi zero x two. What we have then we have one minus. We just for the time being we shall just keep up up to order lambda. So this will be minus i lambda i. Four factorial h bar 
is the first term it is the time order product of this thing minus i lambda you can set h bar to 1 so let us put h bar is equal to 1 let us just put this forget about h bar <coughs> i lambda by 4 factorial This, then we have integral. So what I can do, I can just keep the integral outside, put it outside b for y, and here I have a to the power of four. I missed a to the power of four here. So now I have five half to the power of four y. B for y is already outside. Okay. What is the first term? What is this term? Anyone? What is this term? Sir, I delta f. Very good. So this you can put to be I delta f x1 minus x2. So this is this term. <clears throat> then you have this, so you can in this. So we need to evaluate, calculate the second term. So let us look at the second term, it is integral d4y vacuum expectation value of time order product of phi 0 x1, phi 0 x2, phi naught to the power of 4 y. We need to calculate this. How will you calculate this? What is the see all these are free fields and this is the vacuum expectation value. This vacuum is also that of the free Hamiltonian. It's a, it's a state of minimum energy of the free theory. So what you can do? You can apply Wick's theorem. How many operators are there? One, two, and four. Six operators are there. So you have to make, make an expansion of this full thing, where all possible, where you have to contract basically all the fields. You cannot keep any field left uncontracted because in, in the big theorem there will be terms where there is one contraction, all possible permutation, two contractions, all possible con con permutations, and so on. But if you just contract any, on, take, take contract only a, a pair of the operators, you have four operators here. Which are not contracted, and therefore that will give you that will give you a zero result, a null result. <coughs> you have to basically contract everything. So what you what you can do is the answer will be you can contract this and this. So that will give you phi zero x one phi naught x two. That is a contraction. 
but you cannot keep these uncontracted you have to contract them so there are phi not y phi 0 y phi 0 y phi 0 y so how can you contract this you can contract this with this and then you have to contract this with this then only you will get a non vanishing result but you can contract this with this also and this with this also and similarly you can contract this with this one and this with this one so how many terms are there three possible terms so this will actually lead to three times i0 i i0 i contractions so there will be three terms which come from here is this clear Yes. So this is one contraction and this is another contraction. This will be a factor, there will be a factor of three. Plus, now what you can do is you can contract x1 with y and x2 with y. Okay, so let me write it here phi not x1, phi not x2. Phi not y, phi not y, phi not y, phi not y. And here we can contact this with this with this, this with this, and then two y's will remain, phi not y's will remain, and you have to contact. And this you can do in many ways. This is another possibility which you can do in many ways and you can just convince yourself that you can do it in 12 ways. So this will be 12 by naught x1. So this you have contacted with this. So this is phi naught x1, phi naught y. This is the contraction. Then you have phi naught x2 phi not y contraction, then you have phi not y, phi not y contraction. This you can do it in 12 days. So there will be 12 such terms here. Now, you know, just, just a minute. I'll take your question in a moment. Just a minute. Just one second. Yes, tell me, please. Uh, uh, sir, uh, why is the minus sign coming? Uh, which minus sign? Minus 3, 5, 0, it's 1. No, no, this is not minus 3, this is 3. Okay. okay. There is no minus. Okay, sir. Okay. Good. But if you see this contraction, this phi not phi not a phi not x1 phi not x2, it is actually what? It is basically the vacuum expectation value of the time ordered product of phi not x1 phi not x2. So this thing is basically nothing but i delta s x1 minus x2. Right? This one. Similarly, this thing is i delta s y minus y. So this is actually i delta s 0. Similarly this thing, i delta s y minus y. Plus 12, this is i delta s x1 minus y. Then i delta s x2 minus y. Then i that is y minus y, which is 0. This is what we have. So this is the integral and you have an integration sitting outside, which is the integration over d4y. So let me write down the full result now. 
you can write down the full result is omega t e i x1 i x2 this uh, not zero omega you want to calculate this this is basically i delta f x1 minus x2 x1 minus x2 then we have minus i lambda by 4 factorial integration of over default y and then we have <coughs> 3 i delta x x1 minus x2 i delta f So this is what we have, and this is all. This is all y minus y. Remember, it's y minus y plus 12 i delta f x1 minus y i delta f x2 minus y into i delta f y minus y is once again zero. So this is the full result that we have obtained. Is this clear? So we have yes, written sir. up here. Remember, we need to calculate the denominator also. So what we have done is we have applied this theorem now to write down this full. Write down the numerator omega e phi one phi x two omega. Now you see that this term, this is phi naught x one phi naught x two. This is basically nothing but i delta f x one minus x two. So this is the free Free propagator of the of propagator of the real scalar field, and what we shall do is introduce some notation, some diagram for that. I shall call this object. I shall write it in a diagrammatic way. I shall call this point x1, call this point x2. So whenever I have a propagator from x1 to x2, I will denote it by a straight line with two points, x1 and x2. So this this propagator is nothing but a two point correlation function. Two point. So there are two points, one and two, and I denote one of the points by x1, the other point by x2. It is a two point correlator, co correlator, and it's basically a Green's function or a propagator, whatever you like to call. And this propagates from x1 to x2. So this is a straight line. So this expression that you have is denoted by this diagram. So whenever you see diagrams, this diagram actually corresponds to this, and this has a mathematical expression. We have actually derived the mathematical expression for that. So this is basically one of the Feynman rules that this straight line basically denotes this. This is the Feynman rule. This is the Feynman rule for the propagator. So let me just write it down. This is the Feynman rule for propagator. For the real scalar field propagator. What about this term? Let us try to draw pictures for that term. <clears throat> so that particular thing will be minus. I lambda by 4 factorial. You see, this term delta f x1 minus x2 is independent of y, so you can take it outside the y integral. So, so this thing is once again a propagator, so it is basically three times x1 to x2. 
3 times x1 to x2. <clears throat> okay. And the rest you have delta f y minus y, delta f y minus y. So if y is a point like this, if it is a point like this, so what it is doing, it is taking it is taking you from y to y, right? There is an integration over y. So what you, you will do is this term, for example, if you write delta f. This is y minus y. So this point is same. It takes you from point y and it brings you to the same point. So it is like a bubble. And y is integrated over. That is why you have a loop like this. It is integrated over. This term is also y to y. So you have another bubble. This is the point y. It has been integrated. So you have two loops there because it has been integrated out. So this takes care of this term. So you can write this as minus i lambda by 4 factorial 3 this. You do this. Then you have this term which is plus 12. See look at this term. This is very interesting. Let us take two external points x1 and x2. And they let take an intermediate point y. So you are going from x1 to y. So this is a propagator, straight line, and x2 to y. This is also a propagator. But what is delta f? This is 0, this is at y, centered at y. This is y minus y, and you have an integration over y. So what this means is that you have a loop at y, centered at y. Whenever you have loops, you have integration over y. Sir, huh? so if there is no integration over y, so that will just be a point. If it See, is only i delta f 0. i delta f 0. No integration. Then it okay. will just be a point. No. You mean to say that you have something like this. You just let me just uh, see that it is. Uh, See, if you have something like this, if you have something like this, delta f, say, by x minus x, it basically tells you that you, you take, you go here, you go and come back here. It is basically a bubble. So you are coming back to the same point. That is what it means. Sir. Yes. Sir, uh, when we are consider, uh, so considering an integral like suppose integral of d for y delta f y minus y, the result mm -hmm. is actually infinite. So how can we just... It is, it is infinite. You are correct. You are, it is infinite. It is infinite. Okay. I will. I am answering your question in a moment. Just, just a minute. Just a second. Just answer your question. See, when you have delta f x minus x, 
shown yes sir and you have a d4x that's like in this case you have a d4y and this was y minus y right yes sir this was y minus y so this is actually what delta is y minus y means it is independent of y right yes yes it is independent of y so this actually delta is y minus y integral over d4y it is delta is zero but delta is zero is independent of y so you can take this delta is zero outside and you have a d4y hmm yes sir right you have a, you have a d4y so what you basically do is this d4y is actually a volume factor yes it is a volume factor but what is important is this that delta is zero is this loop that you should remember or more precisely what you can do is you can write you can write this thing as with an integral sign here you can write an integral before y over here and that is that is good enough is this clear no actually sir i am trying to say that uh, that part is clear in infinite uh, term but uh, delta f0 we can also write it at as x1 minus x1 i mean it is not no, right but, no but we should remember that from where this zero is coming you should remember that this is coming from y minus y it is not coming from x minus x it is coming from the contraction of which operator phi not to the power of 4y from there the contract from the contraction of those four operators you are getting phi not y phi not y so you are getting a del i delta f y minus y so it, you cannot write it as x minus x that you, that is that you should be careful you cannot write it as x minus x it is actually centered at y okay it basically means that at y there is a bubble okay okay it basically means that at y there is a bubble you should ask more questions at this point sir in the first one i mean 3 into the diagram you have drawn the y point mm -hmm. you have taken above the straight line so we can place it anywhere or you can put it here also it doesn't matter anywhere i i would actually come to this point uh, in a moment you can actually put it anywhere you like okay okay sir. see the important point that i would like to mention here is the following see just look at this diagram and this diagram this diagram this part of the diagram and this part of the diagram are disconnected from each other so this is this is a disconnected feynman diagram but this full diagram is actually a connected diagram this is a connected feynman diagram and this is a disconnected feynman diagram so this is important actually you should be careful about it this is a disconnected diagram this is a connected diagram so you see that here this quantity has a disconnected piece and a connected piece how many vertices are there see this is first order in perturbation theory lab there is only we have taken terms of two order lambda so there is only one vertex this is but this is a vertex this is a vertex Sir, uh, which one is called a vertex? This is this is the vertex. This is the vertex because at that point you have an interaction. I will come to it in a. I'll tell you. I will tell you. I'll give you more details about it. Oops. Okay. I'll give you more details about about this thing.
actually i will do the calculation again but i want to show you one thing here very quickly i will do the calculation again i I'll, i'll do the calculation in is better to do it in the momentum space also it is i think it is good to do in the momentum space i will do it once more Okay. Yeah, what I wanted to tell you was the following. Uh, just repeat the question that you asked once more. What you said here. This is the vertex. Okay. I will tell you. See, just look at this point. So, see, at the vertex, there should be four lines. One, two. Three, four. So from each vertex, a vertex is like something like this. Since this is a five-fourth interaction, at the vertex there will be four external lines. Is it clear? Yes. So this is the vertex. Look at this point. One, two, three, four. At each vertex, there will be four external lines, four lines. Sir, uh, there are four lines because of uh, the five-fourth interaction. Okay. 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 So let let me just tell you that this is disconnected, as I mentioned earlier. This is a disconnected diagram, and this is a connected diagram. And this is a vertex. At the vertex, you will have four lines. This is because of the five-fourth interaction. See here, for this term, this term you can actually. This is delta f y minus y. So this bubble is centered at y. This is you should remember that this bubble is centered at y. So you can take it outside the d four y integral, but still, if you want to write it in terms of y, then you should remember that this bubble, that loop that you have, it is centered at y. Because delta f x one minus x two is basically nothing but it is something like this. Or if you put in an i, you denote it like this. When x1 is equal to x2, then what happens is that, is that it, this folds up and you get a loop. So what so this is this is line? Like, so what does this line or loop mean physically? Okay, this physically means that this is the propagator. It's, the particle is propagating from x1 to x2. That is what what i delta f x1 minus x2 is. You just denote this by a diagrammatic by a diagram. So this diagram corresponds to this, which physically means that it is a propagator from x1 to x2. Okay. Is this clear? Sir, so or we can that say that. Ah. Uh, I mean, we can also say that the particle is creating 
getting created at x1 or getting annihilated at x2 something like that see here say that? we are not looking you can say but here we are really not looking into scattering okay so here a particle is basically propagating from one point to another point so that is what we are looking at so this is a propagator a particle moving in the interacting vacuum from point x1 to point x2 so this is a propagator and what we are doing physically is trying to calculate this propagator or we are trying to calculate it in terms of the free propagator plus correction terms that is what we do in perturbation theory is an approximate result so you are trying to get an expression for the proper for the corrected propagator corrected due to the presence of interactions because if there were no interactions then this propagator would simply be this thing from x1 to x2 this one i delta is x1 minus x2 but now you are trying to find out corrections to this propagator and the corrections to this propagator is this 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 term and this term up to first order in, in the perturbation the coupling constant sir yes ah uh, if i shift the bubble uh, to some other point then also the result doesn't change i mean see this thing you cannot write it like this into this this will be a wrong thing then this will be a disconnected diagram you cannot write then this will be the same as this diagram it has one bubble it has two bubbles but you cannot write this thing as this times this in a disconnected way that is a wrong thing because this bubble is basically centered at y that you should remember that is why it is important bubble is centered at y okay is it clear yes sir this you should keep in your mind that the bubble is basically centered at the point y otherwise you will be in a problem is it okay you can all see this is a this diagrammatic way is basically a shorthand way of writing everything this you should always you should remember and here also you should remember i think it is a better thing to write the write an integral outside before y so that we get rid of all the confusion just write it write a before y outside because in any case this is from y to y is Is a, is a bubble, and this is also y to y. Is a bubble centered at y, but then you have also have a full factor d four y integration d four y factor, and for this term also you have an integration over y. You can keep the integration d four y outside, or what you can say is the following: that three this times this, or just d integral d four y i f this into i f this is this full bubble, whatever is convenient for you. Can think it in that in those terms, but I think it is better to keep the integration outside because the integration is over there, and then you have these bubbles. Okay. And what is important from this result is you can see that there is a disconnected piece and a connected piece. And in tomorrow's class, what we shall do in the next class, we shall try to calculate what this is. You should calculate this quantity. Because what we have done is we have calculated the numerator. We should calculate the denominator and see what happens. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Do you have any confusion? I, 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 it seems that you have, you may have some confusions, but we shall go through it once again, and we shall try to resolve the confusions. You should ask me what is troubling, what may uh, uh, trouble you at this point. 
you should be you can ask any question which whatever you you feel you can ask at this moment so this is the first sir, time that you are encountering alignment diagrams so we should go slow ha huh? actually uh, i don't understand what is the actual problem but i feel a bit confusing these things who is this speaking jersey sir i am a little bit confused now you are you are saying that you are not fully understanding or you are confused about what is the problem uh, yes i uh, i mean actually uh, I actually don't understand the diagrams properly. I mean, how no, does it mean? That, no, no. You just said that you are not understanding the problem. Yeah. So, did you understand what what we are trying to calculate or what? Yes, sir. Yes, asking? sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That, that you are that you have understood, right? Yes, sir. So we are trying to calculate the interacting propagator. That this is our problem. Hmm. Now with interacting pro propagator, you can see that this is the free propagator. This term hmm. plus the correction term. These are the correction terms. Hmm. It the free propagator gets corrected by these terms, so that gives you the interacting propagator. So this is the result. Physically. physically, this is what you have obtained. Obviously, that is what is expected. So the interactive theory, interactive theory propagator will be in terms of the free propagator. It will be the free propagator plus corrections to the free propagator due to interactions. And these are the corrections terms up to first order in lambda. Okay. And in those corrections, you see that there is one term which is a disconnected term, and this there is another term which is a connected Feynman diagram. So this is what we have seen. And how do we construct the diagrams? It is very simple. It is not difficult. I delta f x one minus x two. This we denote it by a straight line. This one. So here, let us look at this term. This integral over d4y. So we have an integral over d4y. I delta is x1 to y. So x1 to y is a propagator straight line. Jersey. Hmm. X2 to y is another propagator. X2 to y straight line. Both come and meet at y. Hmm. Right. Hmm. X1 to y is a propagator. X two to y is another propagator, and both meet at y. Common point is y, so you get two straight lines, and then you have delta f y minus y. So there is a loop centered at y, so that is why you get a bubble here. Hmm. So this is how you get the diagram for this term, Feynman diagram for this term. What about this term? If x1 to x2, this is this propagator, and there are two bubbles centered at y. So you, this is the y point, and this y is de decoupled from x1 to x x1 and x2. So this is a disconnected diagram, and you have an integration over y sitting outside. Now is it clear? Yes. Okay. Sir. Ah. Uh. I have one ah, question, yes. sir. Ah, uh, well. I know that uh, del f x one minus y is represented by a straight line, but uh, yes. it, uh, here it means that del f y minus x two is equals to del f x two minus y. I mean, there is no, no, no. direct. There is no direction. You are right. You are right. There is no directional problem here. You take two points, x one and x two. Yes. And you take one point y. Yes. So what does i delta x one minus y tell you? It tells you that just join these two points by a straight line. Yes. 
and what does i delta x2 minus y tell, tell you? It tells you that you join this by a straight line. So whether you write the diagram like this or whether you write it like this, it doesn't matter. Okay. Their topology can be same. You can just deform it and make it to this point, to this form. Yes. Now at y, this is the point y. At y, you have a bubble. You have another bubble here. Yes. Now, now is it clear? Yes. So there is so, no need of any arrow. I mean, x two to y direction. Absolutely. In this diagram, you don't need an arrow. Okay. You don't need an arrow. We will see where where arrows will be important. We will encounter such diagrams where okay. arrows are important. Okay. okay. So you have so just as Joyashi mentioned, let me just summarize once more. This is the problem. That is that is we want to calculate the interacting propagator. It's a particle moving from one point to another point at a later time, another spatial point at a later time. We want to calculate that. And the particle is moving in the interacting vacuum. That is the state of minimum energy of the full interacting theory. So that is the problem that we want to in what want to solve. So this is the propagator, the interacting propagator, I, I call it. So that interacting proper propagator, it comes out that that is in terms of the uh, free theory propagator. It is equal to the free theory propagator plus corrections coming to the free theory propagator, the propagator free field propagator. In the corrections are coming due to the presence of interactions, and these are the correction terms. So you get two types of corrections. One is this correction, which is a disconnected Feynman diagram. Why? Because this part and this part of the diagram are not connected with each other, and this is a connected Feynman diagram because the, this part and the bubble. Are connected with each other. So you get corrections. Now you can you can go if you are ambitious enough, then you can try and calculate the correction up to order lambda square also, and see what kind of diagrams you 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 need to take. So if you include corrections of lambda square, then this propagator will be accurate up to order lambda square. This interacting field propagator will be accurate up to order lambda square. So you should go and go ahead and do that calculation. But for convenience or for simplicity, we have kept only terms up to order lambda. Order lambda means that you will only get one vertex. You are, see here there is one vertex and there is one vertex. A vertex has four lines because it is a five-fourth interaction. So at each vertex, there will be four external lines. And since this is a two-point correlator, there are two points, so there are two external points, x1 and x2. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So let us stop at this point today and carry on from here in the next class.